biggest stories, all the highlights, and the greatest fans. You're watching Mid Michigan's original hometown hoops on NBC 25. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hometown Hoops. I'm Tom Eschen. And I'm Corey Kovic. We have one of the best rivalries in mid-Michigan to showcase tonight. Yes, a game everyone's been talking about. It is Valentine's Day Eve, Corey, but definitely no love loss here between Saginaw High and Arthur Hill. And that's exactly why it's our game of the week. Yep, <laughs> that's right. After the recommendation on, came in on Wednesday to close Saginaw High School. A little more writing on this one, too. Possibly the last time these two teams ever played each other during the regular season. There were an estimated 1,500 fans on hand to watch this one tonight. And they got their money's worth first quarter. Willie Rogers with a big drop step to the bucket. Arthur Hill out to an early lead. The Trojans respond quickly off the miss. Sophomore Eddie Big Ten Jr. with a rebound. The putback and the there you go. <laughs> there you and go. check out the hair. Easily the coolest <laughs> hair of the night. Next sagging off position, fire. Ron Quavius southward with a stutter step and the lay in. The Trojans go up by two later in the period. Arthur Hills to Quavian Johnson with a spin in the lane. Lumberjacks win it in uh, excuse me, regulation 9 to 81. What a game, Corey. Out to the thumb we go. Kingston at Sandusky Girls and little uh, bass saxophone, I think. Tenor sax, I think that's what it was. I didn't play that in high school. I was a trumpet Very guy, tough. personally. Early on, Redskins, Brooke Kruger splits two Cardinals and converts there. She was making some music there. Those moves on the other end. Hey, high low to Madison Coter layup. And then a little bit later, it's Kruger again on the breakaway. That's very easy. Sandusky wins pretty easily too, 37 to 17. Reese at Vassar going back to boys basketball. The fans were jacked up for this one. We're gonna pick it up off the opening tip off. Vassar wins it, Tyler Humpert to DeAndre Callahan who finishes strong. And then Colton Fabro gets, gets ripped by Antonio Belegas. Picked and he pocket. takes it the distance, picked his pocket, thank you. You're welcome. And then it was Caleb Weisenberger, that's a mouthful, splits <laughs> three dif Reese defenders, gets the end one. Vassar wins 58 to 49. Well, welcome to the jungle here, Corey. Name that band. Uh, Guns N' Roses. There we go. GNR, baby. <laughs> Kersley here. How about some fundamentals here as Fenton hosting Kersley? Ross Ebert taking the charge, and the jungle agrees with the call. Look at that. Look at him all excited there on the <laughs> sideline. Close game nearing the half. Alec Thomas from the corner here, draining the three. Runs back on defense. He played some good defense, and then the next time down, he goes to the opposite corner. Same result. This one goes down to the wire. Fenton wins it 83 to 80. Wow, good game. Look at Kersley. Fighting hard. The other scores to pass along to you. Now, number one, Beecher was on the road at River Rouge. They win 60 to 43. And Hemlock falls to Freeland in girls basketball, 59-28. Beaverton, number two, continues to do well. 53-28 over Farewell. And then Essexville Garber beats Frankenmuth tonight, 68 to 60. We have much there. more to come. I know, right? Really was, that was yeah. a big upset tonight. Yeah. We have much more to come as well in this week's edition of Hometown Hoops. The best divisional battles are coming up in our full court press when Hometown Hoops continues after the break. Right here on NBC 25. Hey, What's up, kids? This is my team, Cleves, and you're watching Friday Night Hoops on NBC 25. Yeah, I gotta love my team, Cleves Absolutely. there, Corey. Welcome back to Hometown Hoops here on NBC 25. A Friday the 13th slash Valentine's Day Eve edition, whatever you prefer, Corey. I know we were talking about this earlier. What's really theme the show as? Friday the 13th, easily. Yeah. Valentine's Day, the average American spends $132 per person. Friday the 13th costs you nothing. Oh, and all you need and is there's just, yeah, a historical guess. significance there too. Anyway, Arthur Hill yeah, went over just, Saginaw. Just can you history. imagine? Can you imagine if the, if Saginaw does get shut down, the team that those two schools will combine to make next year? Definitely, be unreal. Definitely one of the best games of the night. You were there tonight. Pre pretty cool to see all those yeah, people. Absolutely. You know, and we go to another rivalry here. Two girls rival teams. They've been on fire. Midland and Dow. They could give those two teams a run for their money in yep. the future if those teams don't play. Might uh, be a marquee matchup here. Midland visiting Midland Dow. As I mentioned, ladies taking center stage here tonight in the first quarter. Dow's Ellie Taylor here takes it, pops the three at the top of the key. That's good. Pretty good there. Chargers up three. Then a little bit more Dow later on. Chargers work it around. Then down low to Kaylee Wasco. Gets it in with the left hand off the glass. Hard she lays it in. Dow up three, but the Chemex come firing back in this one as the cheerleaders. Very excited. Big smile there. Jaden Williams <laughs> takes it to the hole. Two traffic gets it to fall. Midland takes the two point lead. And then a little bit later, it's Sadie DeWilt. This is good from three-point land. Chemex up four at that point. Go on to win 60-47. Midland Dow wins. In game two, Midland at Dow. Boys, first game, excuse me, game one of the doubleheader 
fourth quarter. There's Dow. They played two games tonight. It doesn't matter which order they came in. Alec Marty comes down the far side, drives and finishes. Chargers up five. Chemistry spot. They work it inside to Kyle Johnson for the lay-in, and we are nice deadlocked position. at 50 Textbook. after regulation. That looks like you were the low block. Overtime, Overtime. Yeah. Midland comes out firing Joshua Henschel for a three. It's good. That that it gives good. Midland the lead. They're so short. <laughs> Dow isn't giving up. Marty for three. Brings the Chargers within one point. Free throws, the difference here. Dow's last ditch effort at the buzzer doesn't fall. Midland wins on the road, 60 to 57 in OT. The classic inner city rivalry, you know, they're just two two town, you know, two teams that really just wanted to win. They played their guts out. I can't even tell you all the different plays that were made, but both teams deserve to win. And uh, we came out with the win that we expected to get. Should be a rivalry theme show tonight. A lot of those know, right? Swan Valley at Bullet Creek Girls and that nice little face cut out sign there. <laughs> Bullock Creek here in the first quarter. Lancer's inbound to Haley Helped. She's good for three. Bullock Creek up five. Still in the first. Madison Hill here after a little bit. Hannah Helt on the break. Helt, nice finish. Once big bounce there for the bounce. Lancer's up seven. Bullock Creek dominating at home here. Helt, nice hustle. It has some popcorn. Get your popcorn out. Terrell Owens, look at that hustle <laughs> on the floor. Gets a turnaround jumper here in the paint. Lancer's up 11. Bullock Creek too much for Swan Valley. And just like a Drake mixtape dropping an album last night. If you're watching this, it's too late. Bullet Creek stays perfect, 61-35. Oh, wow. wow, top mission, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Good highlight so far, Corey. It's time now for one of my favorite segments, as Billy Joel once sang about, it's Pressure. Or Queen. Pressure. Yeah, or Queen featuring David Bullet. It's another I was going to say song. Under Pressure. Yeah. It's a much better, much better song. Uh, the team's facing pressure this week with key divisional battles. Important as we inch closer to the postseason, we go to the Tri Valley Conference now. Hemlock and Freeland boys separated by the game by a game in the Tri Valley Conference uh, Central. First half, Dylan Smith, quick touch pass to Connor Harrigan for the bucket, and then Freeland's Connor Jankoska, knife through he knife through the Hemlock defense. Freeland loses at home to the Huskies, 76 to 70. Continuing now, Bridgeport, Birch Run here getting ready to go. In the first quarter, Bridgeport's Kevin Hahn to Leo Dorr, who drops the high arcing triple. Birch Run up by five, eight three at that point. They actually cruise to a 67-52 win tonight. Back to boys basketball. Uh, are we boys basketball? Or girls basketball We're here? staying with the boys. Staying here. with the boys. Swartz yeah. Creek visiting Holly. Weird play. The ball flying all over the place. Parker Rouse, amazing effort. Swartz Creek gets it through. Ian Hodges for Holly finally ends up with it. Scores and there hits the layup. He's, he's got it now, Corey. Don't there worry. it is. There <laughs> it is. He finished that layup. Holly 69, won by a lot. 69 39. Yeah. Final yeah. score. Big win for Holly tonight. They continue to roll. And we got some scores also to share with you tonight, Corey. Uh, we got Heritage 24, Mount Pleasant 21 in girls basketball. In boys basketball, MLS squeaks by Carlton 52-50. And one more highlight to show you tonight as you see those other scores, a half court shot. Let's take a look at the video here. Pretty cool, Corey. Part of a Hoops for Diabetes event. Matt Pumford half court shot for $5,000 oh, at halftime. Come on, Matt. It's up. And it's amazing. Last year, this game <laughs> raised $6,000 to the Covenant Kids Fund thanks to Rick's Mixter for sending that in. That's all for Hometown Hoops this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Court.